sometimes you just gotta hit record because it's something seems like it's blocking you and I don't know what it is sometimes it's tough you know in the morning you feel like ah I don't want to get up I don't want to get up you know I just want to stay asleep and I think that kind of translates into life sometimes too whether or not you want to wake up or stay asleep it's easy to be asleep you know and believe the uh, stories that you tell yourself that you are and believe the things that are being marketed to you that that's going to create your happiness and also believe what other people say about you and it's not easy to go within and really dig you know past all your whatever you got there whatever it may be that's hard it's easy to think that something else is the cause of the way you're feeling or something else is the reason why something is and that that's not right it's hard to think that the universe is unfolding perfectly and that we attract what we put out it's really hard to think that because then it would mean that my problems are ultimately from me and that I would have to look within myself and take responsibility for what I manifest in my life that's not easy there isn't any other way and once you know it, it you really can't go back it's almost like the uh, <laughs> it's almost like the guy in the matrix that took the red pill and then he and then he was like oh no I wanted the I, I should have took the blue pill I should have took the blue pill and I, I pretty much think that everybody does that does take the red pill thinks that at some point oh I should have just took the blue pill because it would have been easier then I could have just stayed asleep and went along with everything you know and not and not have these you know thoughts that are so different from the thoughts that are that are pretty much programmed in us from the time we were born. It's like we were born into the matrix and then it takes so long to get out. And maybe for some people they get out a lot earlier. For me, it took me a long time to realize that what spirituality was. I believe that in some Sometimes when I was practicing religion, I believed that there was some spiritual practices that I benefited from for sure. But then there was always a hindrance there. There was always a wall. I couldn't get to the next level of my spiritual journey. I really did have to meditate and go within and be in nature and feel connected to everything. I couldn't, I couldn't accept, you know, um, what other people thought about a religion what you should believe, what you should do, because that's different for everybody. I wasn't going to record because, you know, it's, it's another one of those, it's actually a really cool morning here. But it was, you know, it was a tough morning to get up. And uh, usually I take a shower before I come out and then I was like, ah, no, I'll put off the shower. But then it's like, you know, these pathways in my brain from synapses firing in this certain direction for so long, it's, it, it, there's that pathway that's still there and the, you know, the neurons, the synapses or whatever want to fire in that direction. It's almost like you're walking, you're trying to walk out of like a, uh, say it's like a stream of lava and that's that's been your thought pattern 
as that stream of lava. And before I was just in the stream of lava and I didn't even really know because I was pretty much asleep. And then eventually I realized that I was in the stream of lava and became aware of it. I was able to climb out of it. But being out of the stream of lava and is not an easy thing because there's always it's always slippery on the sides because you're you know carving this new thought pattern you know carving a new thought pattern is is hot because these are all new thoughts and you know you've got to really stay vigilant with it so say like think of it as like trails in the woods it's a lot easier to just go on a trail that's already been carved through the woods. You kind of know what's gonna happen. And, and that's pretty much with the thought pattern is that there's a little bit of comfort in the predictability. But you know, you've been on that trail, you don't like it. So to carve a new one, it's not easy. You, you have to get out the sword or whatever, not, not the sword, the, uh, the machete, you know, and do a little bushwhacking. And it's, it's not the path really of least resistance, but it's, it's the one that you know that's true to yourself. But you always, sometimes you'll look over at the other path and think like, and you're seeing other people walk down it and sometimes it appears like, oh, okay, I could just go walk down that path. But you know, you know that you can't really go back. Because there's only, you can only go forward. And you go back to the other path sometimes and you're like, oh, okay. And then you realize it's not, you did all this work to not walk that path. You have to get back to the other one with the machete. And you have to clear the brush. And you don't know what's going to happen on that path too. So there's, there's a level of, uh, you know, you got to be brave to go down it. You're not it, there, and you're not supported by, you know, as many people as you think you would be. There's people. Everybody has their own beliefs, but it's easier to go along with society and the the main path and everybody walks in the group and we you know it's that's the easy way to really think for yourself and carve out another path is hard and then in spirituality there's all these you know gurus and stuff like that and and that's another that that can be another well-worn path if you go down what they're going down too that's kind of like following another carved path. And I'd really think that true spirituality is, is different for everybody and that everybody really does need to carve their own path. And sometimes you do meet another person that's carving their own path too. You know? It's interesting. But there's no other, there's no better way Because you always know, you always know that you're, when you try to just, I don't know, go back into, you know, if I was to just sleep in every morning again and just get up when I had to get up and not get up extra early and take the dogs out and meditate and sun gaze and really try to center myself before the day. I would just fall, it would be, it would be harder, for, it would be easier for me to fall into that main path. But to really think, to really become conscious and aware, and not only to think, but just to be, to be in nature and, you know, I feel the rock under my foot, I hear the crickets, you know, it sounds crazy. You know, people, I don't know, people could think I'm losing my mind. I've already done that. And I don't think that's the case now. 
and the more that you carve that path, your own path, with the machete and you don't know what's coming up and there might be a cliff up there. There might be a cliff and you're going to have to navigate it when it comes to it. You can't, you, you don't see what's coming in the future. There really isn't any predictability. But you know that, you know that you're, that you are carving your own path and that you're being true to yourself. And there really isn't any anything greater than that. And as far as I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of spiritual YouTubers are talking kind of about the same stuff. And I think it's dangerous to follow any just one of them. I think it's dangerous to fully subscribe to anybody, almost as a cult leader. Because people need something to believe in. And then they have a few things that resonate with them. So then they accept everything else that the person teaches. And I think that's a dangerous way to be. I think that the people that are putting out spiritual content can be super positive. And make a big... Sorry, there's some... Uh, there's a bunch of turkeys over there. <laughs> But make a big um, positive impact in your life. Check out this sun. It's coming up a little bit. Let's see if I get it in the back. Oh, can I not get it? It's coming up a little bit. Right over there. But, you know, they make a positive impact in your life. But ultimately, you got to find your own truths. And there's going to be some stuff that resonates with me. With some guys. And some stuff that resonates with me. With other guys. Whatever. And it, there's always going to be some practices, but to think that there's one way is crazy. I think that's crazy. I think that you do these, and, and any time, it's always like seven or things or something like that. You do these seven things to be more spiritual or whatever, and that's, I, I don't know, There's a, there's a, you can benefit from that, but to think that, like, to fully subscribe to any one of those beliefs is kind of wild to me. It's kind of wacky. I think that the real, you know, sense of purpose and um, whenever I think of like a sense of purpose, I just think it's spreading positivity. I don't, you know, to, to have this whole elaborate, um, I'm going to manifest all this, you know, stuff in my life and this and that. I think that's all kind of, it's kind of woo woo to me. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have. You know, it's almost like some people like use spirituality like to, you know, it's like get what they want out of life and this and that. And I think that's kind of, that's kind of goofy. I think that, you know, having a sense of purpose, whenever I think a sense of a purpose, like I was saying, I, I just think of spreading positivity. That was the whole reason for me doing a channel is to spread positivity as not only to spread positivity, but to be authentic. Be authentic to myself. And maybe people will connect with it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Like I was saying before, it's... Everybody's going to resonate with other people on different frequencies of different... Different things, you know, it's... And the other part about that is, is that you... You know, I, I was thinking about it. It's like a dog whistle, kind of. You know, when you have a... You, you're... I don't know. I don't know. It's like when your vibration is high. And even saying that to me seems woo-woo. But it is. You know, if your vibration is high, it's like you're like a dog whistle sometimes. And, and you could be talking about stuff that's spiritual and high vibrational. And it's, that other people won't see it because... They don't, they're not perceiving that frequency. It's like us, we can't hear a dog whistle. Well, maybe some people can, but some people can't. There's all these different frequencies and vibrations. And the coolest thing I think about that is that, because I don't know, I don't really know much about it, to be honest. I know there's a lot of people that seven steps to raise your vibration and this and that. And I don't really know if that stuff, 
I don't I don't see myself vibrating. I just don't, you know, and I don't Maybe someday all, all I'll see is auras and I'll walk around and it, I'll be manifesting everything. But to be honest, I don't really care. That's not what it is. That's not, that's goofy to me. You know, I don't need my, my whole life to be like that. I, I just want to be doing what I, you know, what I know I should be doing. And bringing positivity into the world and, and, and helping people when I can. And being a giver more than a taker, think of, thinking about what I could give. But the coolest thing I, I think about, like the science of it, is that everything is vibrating. And I'm pretty sure that's a science fact. I don't know. I don't really know that much about it. But if everything is vibrational, it's, that means that everything is on, off, on, off. And basically that's how a computer works with the ones and zeros is on, off, on, off. And so that being said, the coolest part about that, I think, is that nothing is continual. That you're always different every moment because you're on off on off on off so you're never really the same person you're just the same um well you're not the same but you it's the be i'm trying to word this correctly and i'm struggling so if you're on off on off the only sense of yourself is an illusion as far as the story goes the narrative that you created for yourself so everybody has this sense of themselves and they and they're 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 the main character in the book that they're writing you know every that's like everybody's life is like a book and they're the main character and this is happening to the character and but it's wild to think that nothing actually is continual. That everything, you are always becoming a different person. Always. You're never the same person. I wasn't the same person when I started this video. You know, you're becoming, you, you, you're just recreating yourself all the time. And, I mean, that's, see, and that's, and I do struggle with that a little bit as far as, so where does the uh, where does like the flow come? Because everybody knows that there's a, a sense of flow, especially I, I it's like I almost think that it's like the flow comes from being in the now, you know. And it's you know it's snowboarding in the past and stuff like that. You would get into a, I would get into a flow, and it's almost like you're just you're so in the now that you're not thinking at all about anything. And you're just being in that moment. You know, and then how how is there that flow when everything is on off on off? Because wouldn't it be uh 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 or it, but there's also this smooth line. And that's a that's a really interesting thing, especially when you talk about sacred geometry and how there's smooth lines and straight lines. And it's really wild. Like the, the whole flower of life in the sacred geometry is really blowing my mind because there's a, you can see the contrast between a straight line and a curved line and where they meet up together is really wild. You know, it's like you can make this flower life shape and then, well, I don't know if it's a shape, but whatever, design. And then all these other shapes can be within it, and they fall on the exact points. And I don't, I don't know why they don't teach that in school. I'm not sure, but there's some, there is some deeper knowledge to it because you, you do start seeing all those shapes everywhere you look. And the spiral, you look at a pine cone, you can see the spiral in it. And is there significance in that? I don't know. The, the other thing is, what about the Taurus? The Taurus about how the energy starts, it's 3D, and it starts pretty much in the middle and goes up and around and then back underneath. And it's always moving like that. And I'm not sure. I think that there's, I think that the next level it's going to be, you know, humans becoming aware of this stuff. Maybe. 
and may, but maybe not. Maybe it's going to be more matrixy. Maybe it's just going to be, we're going to be routed around like packets in a router, you know? I, guard my, I try to guard myself of that. I don't want to be just routed around by an AI, having an AI make my next, you know, thought. I want to be, you know, I want to watch that bird fly across the sky and just think like it's cool, you know? I don't even wonder, I don't, I wonder what kind of bird it is, you know? There's a sense of wonder, there's a sense of real satisfaction that comes from being in nature. There's a, there's a connectedness to what I really am here. That I am a part of this. And I do, I feel a part of this. I've never felt a part of the matrix. And I guess that was kind of a good thing for me because luckily, luckily, you know, when you're not, when you don't feel a part of something, then you look for, to be a part of something else. You know, if you don't feel a part of it, being in society and the jobs and the, you know, the being the perfect employee and doing everything just right. And then you're, you realize that you're not, you know, that you don't fit into that category that well, that there, you could be a part of something else. And when you come to nature, it's like, well, I can only speak for myself, but when I come into nature, everything feels like it makes perfect sense. You know, and the, and that's weird because the mo most things in nature don't seem worried at all about anything, unless there's something chasing them or they get caught in a spider web and they're dying and or you know getting eaten alive or whatever brutal things happen to you in nature. But besides the point when there actually is real, it th I guess what I'm saying is that it doesn't seem like there's any irrational fears of any animal that lives in the wild. Every fear that they have seems good. Like it's like they should have it. You know, like these turkeys, if they see a coyote, they should be scared, you know? That's really weird to think that like, you know, it, it, it makes, it really makes you think that like we're in like this big soup and my energy affects the, everything around me so strongly. And that's why I think that nature is so healing because let's say you, you know, you make a road, you know, like, oh, let's matrix this baby out. Let's make a, let's, let's build a building, you know, and um, let's, let's build a road and all this stuff, you know, ma make everything, you know, the way that we think it should be, you know? nice let's get rid of all this grass and make it nice clean pavement and the interesting thing about that is is that unless you're constantly fighting against nature and resisting it nature's gonna win if you don't maintain it it's gonna nature will prevail in the end and you'll come back in 10 years if you haven't done anything the road has a bunch of cracks in it there's weeds growing up everywhere and you know, what do people do? It's like, oh no, look at the weeds. You know, it, it's not the way we should have it. So let's, let's poison everything. Let's poison everything. But it's weird because the weeds that you're poisoning are more a part of you than the actual pavement that you're putting over the earth. It's, so you, it's, to think of it, I mean, yeah, maybe it's a, that's a little extreme, but it really is. If you think about it, that's kind of what it is. You got to come back and hit all the weeds and then and then make sure the bushes oh we don't like these bushes we got to kill these bushes and you know this is whatever we can only have these bushes we got to make everything the way it should be the way we want it and then that way it'll be beautiful and it's just that it just seems so against everything in nature um it just seems extreme that part does seem extreme especially when you when you're out here in nature everything just seems so calm and peaceful and i think that when i come out in nature i i i feel like i'm being restored i feel like i'm outside of the rush you know i hear the rush of traffic and i hear the rush of traffic over there 
and it just it doesn't blend in with nature the crickets and the birds and all that stuff they all sound perfect together the rush of traffic just it's it doesn't sound right it's just gross sounding compared to everything you know and then there's a balance and you can't get too woo woo about nature you have to be in society and i understand that and it's uh it's a tough thing though because it really does it really you know you soak in the nature long enough and it's hard to go back it is it's hard to go back into into rushing around and getting frantic and I don't know, I went way off topic there. What I'm saying is, is that true spirituality is an individual thing and everybody has a different path there. There isn't any one way for anybody. I really think the only way that there is is the way that you need to go and, and to go inside and to not look for anything external. Because uh, so above, also below, you look at a tree and you look at, you know, the branches on the top, but there's also roots on the bottom. And I think that with us, it's, you also see, I see these bushes, but there's also this whole ecosystem inside me, you know, and there's a whole universe inside me, you know, and I can affect that universe and therefore be more positive and bring more energy and more positive energy into the world. And that's what I got to do. And that's ultimately my purpose is to bring more positive energy into the world. In the most authentic way that I can to be true to myself. And not let my ego and my and, and the narrative that that gets created in my head not to take o not to let that take over to really be in the present. That's all.